ignore those bad tan lines. Hello, hello, Melissa Kim here, and today we are giving freshman college advice. I am a rising sophomore, but I thought since I'm fresh out of the whole first year thing, I had some more relatable advice to share. By all means, of course, don't be nervous, get involved, blah, blah, blah. But today we will be talking about some of those overlooked topics. A few of these things may be common sense, but I think it's really helpful to be reminded of them. So without further ado, let's get started. The most sarcastic yet realist question you could ask when starting college is how to college to which i'll respond with my number one tip check your emails check your emails please a thing i like to tell incoming freshmen is to add your emails onto your social media lineup you first wake up and pick up your phone they're checking instagram twitter snapchat facebook and your emails whether you're taking an 8 a.m 12 30 p.m or a night class it's always so beneficial to check your email just for that small sliver of hope that your professor canceled class at the last minute. You would hate to have gotten ready, walked all the way to class just to see that no one's there. Check your emails. Also, on a less serious note, I did not think to start checking my emails until I moved on to campus, right? Well, I logged on and I saw two or three different Target coupons. They were 25% off a $25 voucher and I can't remember the third one but I could have used them for my dorm essentials, food, school supplies, just about anything. I mean it was free money, come on. But it expired by the time I checked it so you'll get a lot of spam but you'll also get a lot of important messages. No matter where you go to university or college, I'm sure that it's a whole different area. Especially if you're going to LSU, it is a fairly large campus. So. Each semester, not just freshmen, I recommend to walk your classes. Start off wherever you will be at the beginning of the day and just explore. You'll definitely familiarize yourself with the things on campus. You'll also get acquainted with the travel time. That's a short point. I mean, take that as you will. Walk your classes. Bring a friend. Visit Mike the Tiger on the way. Another basic yet most popular question is, what the heck am I paying for and why? Listen, university is so expensive, so wouldn't you want to know what exactly you're paying for? My tip number two is to take advantage of everything that you're paying for, or at least most of it. That could be the dining halls, the gym, or university recreation, aka UREC if you go to LSU. It could be so many things. If you go to LSU, one way to check what you're paying for is to Google LSU General Catalog. You pick the year that includes your first semester at LSU, scroll down, go to undergraduate fees and expenses and boom you're there just play around on the little tab and you should get a better sense of what exactly you're paying every semester take advantage of your meal plan take advantage of the UREG whether you're working out rock climbing taking group X classes like boxing yoga Zumba or just lazing about in the lazy river you'll at least feel some sense of pride so to speak um, to know that your money is not just being 100% wasted. Okay, yo, y'all see me, right? I am small, very small, very skinny, whatever. So the freshman 15 did not happen to me, but that does not mean that you should skip out on eating, right? So what happens is it gets a really stressful week in your semester and you just forget to eat. For me, that's really detrimental because I lose a lot of weight in a short amount of time. For my friends, that means they do not eat and whenever they finally do again, they eat a lot to make up for the meals that they missed. And that is when the freshman 15 comes in, guys. So whether you're small like me or you're really, really scared of the freshman 15, I'm telling you, please make sure that your schedule includes healthy, evenly spaced meals. Not only for your health, but I mean, it also lets you bond with your friends. Some of the best freshman year memories I have were in the dining halls or at the union. Just wherever. I was eating somewhere with my friends and that was the highlight of my days. I mean, yeah, the food could be better at times, but it's just something about finally sitting down and just debriefing about the day with a friend that you haven't seen in either four hours or four weeks. Food brings everyone together. Another thing I hear a lot of people talk about is 
oh my god i really don't want to eat alone i don't want to do x y and z alone can you walk with me to class it is okay to eat walk alone do whatever alone rest assured no one cares no one cares you might psych yourself out and be like oh my god everyone's looking at me ah what do i do but it's normal right you people watch too as long as you're not doing something outlandish i'm sure you're fine if it helps i recommend calling or video chatting with someone watching a video listening to music or listening to a podcast those are really nice let's talk about homesickness the number one thing people will tell you to do is schedule video chat calls with your friends and family back home sure phone calls here and there can help ease the distance some but whenever you get to see the person on the other side of the phone it really makes a difference now that's just a temporary fix to help with homesickness i believe that you yourself have to find a home for homesickness i believe you have to find your home on campus yes you heard that right for homesickness i believe you have to find your home on campus. Now, it might happen on move-in day, a week from move-in day, two months into the semester, or until spring semester, but eventually you will find yourself comfortable in some way, shape, or form on campus, and that will be the place for you to thrive. Once you find your niche on campus, it'll bring a whole new definition to home. Of course, your actual home will always be your home, but then you won't be spending all of your waking moments in college waiting to go somewhere else. The most beautiful thing about the college experience is being present. But once I found my home on campus, it definitely made that difference. Sorry, I got distracted. Um, I forgot what point I was trying to end with, but in summary, by all means, schedule those phone calls, those FaceTime calls, but also don't be afraid to make a new home. Uh, that was so sweet. So we're gonna do a 180 on the topic of studying. You have hundreds of thousands of videos on YouTube to look up on how to study, how to do this and that. And I might eventually make a video on that, but my study tips are different. Find your perfect study space. My LSU people already know how Middleton Library is. It's not it. <laughs> it is not it. It may be for some of y'all. Um, Milton Library is a cute concept, but sometimes she's not it. So, throughout the semester, you just go exploring and find these initial places. Dean is where a lot of people tend to study. Second floor is cute because they have their own individual cubicles. You won't get interrupted by the person next to you. You might have to do a bit of exploring on the third floor, but eventually you will find long desks walled off. Um, for lots of laptop space, so that's really cute. There is also a fourth floor used for campus life and Greek life offices, but they have a few cute tables and chairs, and it's pretty quiet up there because no one really knows about it. Assuming most of y'all are living on campus, you could definitely take advantage of your residential hall's study areas. That could be the literal study rooms, the libraries, or the outside areas. Right now, I am in the LaVille Courtyard. It's really cute, lots of open space. You can sunbathe, nap, but most importantly, there are tables for you to study. Your rest halls have so much for you to take advantage of. That brought me to my first point, right? Uh, that's a callback. Call that. That is a callback. Uh, and there are lots of other fun places to study, like the quad, the parade grounds, if you like the outside, even your senior college. So since I'm studying mass communication, my senior college building would be the journalism building. During midterm and finals weeks, all the senior colleges put out these food fuel snacks. So you could go into your senior college building, find a nice little quiet area and take advantage of the free food. Next on our agenda is to talk about partying. When thinking about partying, do not stress it, okay? It's different for everyone. You'll quickly find out throughout the semester whether or not you like Tigerland, house parties, small get-togethers with your friends, or just nothing at all. No one's gonna force you to party, and if they are, then you probably shouldn't be around them, right? It's totally okay to go out to the clubs and bars every week if you want, and it's totally okay to never have stepped foot in them. The point is, you're going to university for a degree and you want to be on top of it on another note of partying make sure that you're not running away from anything that goes back to the whole checking your mental health note it's so easy to get really stressed out and just 
drop everything and dance your little butt away the rest of the night. But it's not gonna be fun the next morning when you realize you have, you still have a lot due. So it's okay to treat yourself to t-shirt night at Reggie's every now and again. Quick bullet points for partying. Don't use partying as an excuse to run away from whatever you're running away from. Make sure you deal with it so that partying is really treating yourself. If you do go out, please be responsible. Have a DD, use Lyft or Uber. And it's okay to not want to go out and just stay in and have a chill party. Like a face mask party or a karaoke party. I don't know. And last but not least, even though it should have been first because this is literally the first thing that you'll encounter during your college career, freshman welcome week. Listen, moving day is gonna be hectic. Just make sure you eat and that should solve 70% of the problems, especially during welcome week, stay on campus, but also get out of your dorm. There's so much to do on campus. There's free food, free music, free shirts, hello. And you never know, you might leave with your next best friend. Besides that, getting involved post welcome week also doesn't mean just getting involved with any old club. You could be walking through Nicholson Hall and, oh my God, look, a bulletin board. What? And you'll see all these different flyers. Granted, most of them might not interest you, but some of them, some of them are worth checking out. So you'll see an advertisement for an astrology night in the planetarium. You'll see coupons to do something off campus. So you can send that over to your friends. You will see a diversity night at some res hall that you don't normally go to, but I mean, there's free food, so why not? In summary, getting involved means just being more than a student, right? Yes, we all do go to university to study and get that degree, but also, where's the fun in that if you just go to class, go home, and sleep? Might as well make a few friends along the way, and again, if the people you meet at this one event aren't it, at least you got free food, and then you'll try again at the next event. Usually, I know what I'm talking about in my videos. This was really painful to film since it was so spontaneous. I don't know, I just missed being on campus and I wanted to make a campus-related video. I think that's all from me. Um, I still don't know how to do an outro. I'm Melissa, and you're taught. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> Bye, see you next week.